Hello friends, my name is Paul Cookson, I'm a poet and normally I'll be doing live sessions in the library but with lockdown we can't do that so I'm live in my back bedroom where I keep all my books here, all the important things and uh, I'm going to do some points for you so rather than coming down the libraries in Nottinghamshire I'm sitting in my bedroom and this is beamed out on behalf of the libraries in Nottinghamshire to all you people who have logged on. So. Let me explain what's going to happen. Uh, I'm going to read some poems. Now, I'm not just going to read some poems for you or to you. I'm going to read some poems and perform some poems with you. Because usually, if I had an audience in front of me, I'd expect them to join in. So, why should this be any different? So I thought, wherever you are, you can join in with your brothers, your sisters, your friends and your mums and dads, they have to join in as well. So let's see what sort of audience you're going to be and have a practice joining in in this first poem. Now, I've got lots of books here. So the first book is this book. And this came out a few years ago. It's called Paul Cookson's Joke Shop. And it's uh, full of some of my favourite funny performance poems. And the first poem we're going to do is from this book. And it's about this particular creature here. If I show you that, so there we are. A T Rex. Quite simply, I shall say, the king of all the dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurus, point at you and you're going to say Rex. So we'll try that. The king of all the dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurus. Now, I'm not being funny here, in the sense, I don't mean laughing funny, but I know that some of you didn't join in. So we're going to try it again. All right. So before you join in, turn to the people next to you and say the words, I will, if you will. And say it to your mums and dads and the grown-ups there as well. And you've got to go, Rex! And you've got to sound like a dinosaur. The king of all the dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurus. That was a bit better. To make it even better, though, what you've got to do is get your hands like that. So get those dinosaur claws. Come on, I can see some people still not joining in. I'm waiting. I'll wait till we're all ready. Okay, I think we're almost there now. And it's going to be Rex. The king of all the dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurus. Rex. Brilliant. Gets louder as we go through. The king of all the dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurus. With talon feet and razor claws, leathery scales and monstrous jaws, the king of all the dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurus. Sabre teeth, no one ignores it, rants and raves and royally roars. The king of all the dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurus. The largest of the carnivores, it stomps and chomps on forest floors. The king of all the dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurus. It charges forward, waging wars, gouges, gorges, gashes, gores. Last time, the king of all the dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurus. Okay, this is the last time if you do it louder. Tyrannosaurus. I still think we can go a little bit louder than that. So this is the very last time, as loud as you can. So loud, it makes your grandma's hair fly up. Okay. The king of all the dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurus. I think that was pretty good. In fact, I think you should give yourselves and give each other a round of applause. Well done. Okay, true story about when I was at school, a long, long time ago now, I can tell by the greyness of my beard there, and uh, when I was a little boy at school we had a teacher, his real name was Mr Barlow, but we never called him Mr Barlow, we called him Mr Wrigley because he could never stand still. The top half of his body was still, but he used to sort of like fidget all the time, so I thought, I know what, I'll write a poem all about him. And at that point, we had a dog. He was a Springer Spaniel jumping up and down. I thought, ah, Mr. Springer. That would sound good for the character in the poem. And then I thought, what noise does a spring make? It makes a boing. So the chorus goes, boing, boing, but I'm boing, boing. You've guessed it. That's what you've got to do. So I'll say it, and then you can say it. Okay? Boing, boing, but I'm boing, boing. Some people are thinking, because they've joined in once, they can have a rest. I'm sorry, it doesn't work like that. So, we'll try it again. 
Boing, 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 boing. To make it more exciting, I want you to move your shoulders and do a bit of boinging wherever you are, okay? Boing, 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 boing. He bounces when he walks and he bounces when he talks. He bounces down the corridor, up and down on the floor, up and down on the floor. Boing, 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 boing. Up and down he bounces round and points his bouncy finger. You best watch out when he's about bouncing Mr Springer with the boing, 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 boing. He bounces in assembly, his rubber knees are trembly. You can tell where he has been, he's a human trampoline. A jumping beam and a trampoline with the boing, 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 boing. Boing, 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 boing. Your chance to join him with some rhymes here. He bounces here, bounces there, and he bounces. You've got it. He bounces here, bounces there, and he bounces. He bounces on the table, and he bounces on the. He bounces on the table, and he bounces on the. He bounces in his clothes and in his on. No, he doesn't. And whatever you were thinking of there, do not, because that was very rude and naughty, and you shouldn't be thinking of teachers in the under... Boing, 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 boing. He bounces round the classroom, he bounces to the staff room. He's a human kangaroo, he even bounces on the loo, up and down, up and down. He's bouncing on the teacher's loo with a boing, 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 boing. Last time, boing, 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 boing. Pretty good. Give yourselves a round of applause. And I think I'll let you have a rest from joining in as well. So it's been a very strange year because normally I will spend four or five days most weeks visiting schools and libraries and festivals performing poems. Obviously, since March, that's pretty much stopped. I've been to two or three schools, socially distanced and safe, but most events have been like this, Zoom events or events on the computer. So... Very strange, but it's been a very busy year. I've actually had four books out this year. The first book that came out is this book here called There's a Crocodile in the House. And that's a book of performance points for Key Stage 1. And uh, my friend Liz Million did the illustrations. If you like illustrating, if you like drawing pictures, do look up Liz on the internet because she has done some fantastic um, little videos where she will teach you how to draw crocodiles and dinosaurs and animals and she's absolutely wonderful and if you think you can't draw look her up because she'll show you that you can in fact I'm going to show you how we can write a poem later on as well uh, in fact the poems I'm going to do from here might give you some ideas of writing some poems by yourselves or with your mum and dad or your brothers and sisters or stepmom, stepdad, whoever's with you Okay, and uh, Liz said when I was writing these uh, poems for this book, she said, Have you got lots of poems about animals? I said, Why? She said, I love drawing animals. So, here are two poems that I wrote on the same day, and after I read them, you probably realize why I wrote them on the same day because it's sort of the same idea. And this is called Animal Confusion. There's a wolf with the head of a whale, and a shark with a waggy tail. A monkey with a long grey trunk and a cat that smells like a skunk. A giraffe with a hippo's head and a mouse with elephant's legs. A parrot with crocodile jaws, an octopus with a tiger's claws. A porcupine all covered in fluff, a snake that has a shell so tough. And they may all be mixed up, confusing all of us, but nothing's quite as mixed up as a duckbill platypus. And there's a picture of the duckbill platypus there, and actually, if you look that up on the internet and you find a picture, they are strange looking creatures. So I took various physical characteristics, like the head of uh, a whale. And I've got a wolf on it. The wolf with the head of a whale and a shark with a waggy tail. She started mixing them up. And then the other idea I had, and this is why I wrote it on the same day, was I thought, what if they did 
the things that other animals could do. For instance, this is called, there's a jumble in the jungle. Way down in the jungle, everything has changed. Everything is different and things are very strange because elephants fly way up high. Sad hyenas sob and cry. Giraffes all burrow underground. Silent parrots make no sound. Alligators climb up trees. Snakes have all grown hairy knees. Lizards swing from vine to vine. Gorillas leave a trail of slime. Rhinos wriggle in the river. Hippos hiss and slide and slither. Speedy sloths are running races. Lions pulling funny faces. All the zebras now have spots. Leopards, stripes instead of dots. Yes, everything has changed. Way down in the jungle. Things are very strange. In the jungle. Jungle. And some pictures there of all these strange creatures. So there we have the uh, alligator climbing up trees, a flying elephant and a spotty zebra. And sometimes I make mistakes and they turn into poems. For instance, I wrote down the word warthog, but I put a year in it. It became warty hog. I thought, oh, I quite like that. The warty hog, a pig of sorts, has purple pimples and hairy warts. It sniffles, snorts, sits on a log, the sniffy, snorty, warty hog. It sits and splashes in the bog, the stinky, smelly, warty hog. And there we are, the warty hog there. Next room we have the porcupine. Not porcupine, the porky pine. The porcupine, a prickly swine, a beast that no one likes. No friend of mine, the porky pine, is a pig all covered in spikes. And there we have the porcupine there. Brilliant pictures by Liz. I think you might guess what two creatures have combined together to make this one. It's called the hippopotamus. Not the hippopotamus, the hippopotamus. He'll smash the doors and break the walls if he gets in your house. There's no trap that is big enough for the hippopotamus. Mouse, and there he is. Isn't that a great picture? The chimpanzee. The chimpanzee has a slippery feel. He's long and thin and quite unreal. He swings through trees and then swims through seas. The cheeky chappy chimpanzee. There are. Part chimpanzee and part eel. So putting two words together to make a new one is a great way of writing a poem. So this book came out just before lockdown. That was the first book of the year. The second book of the year came out about uh, a month ago. And it's called Football for Everyone. And uh, it says football, and it's got the, the number four and the number one. But of course it means football is for everyone. It's not just for boys, it's for boys and girls. It's not just for young people, it's for old people as well. It's not just for men, it's for women. So it's everybody can play football. Hence this point. If you want to join in, I'll point to you, you can go one, football for every, okay, a few people joined in, I'll try it again, football for every, so put the all in football, we're all having fun, we all know the score, football for every, football for every, football for everyone, down with hate, racism too, football is for everyone, it's him and her and me and you. Back garden or school playground or down the local park. It doesn't matter where you start. Five aside under the lights. A kick about with your mates. Penalties with dad and mum. Keep you uppies by yourself. Football for every one. And everyone can play. And everyone can kick a ball. Jumpers for your goalposts. That's why football has it all. So put the all in football. We're all having fun. We all know the score. Football for every. Football for every. Football for every. Two. But the two is spelled T-O-O. -O, it's inclusive. Now, if you are eagle-eared, if there is such a thing, 
be eagle eyed, you will notice in the middle of that poem, I actually made a slight mistake. I got the words in the wrong order. I said, kick about with mates, penalty with dad and mum, five aside under the lights, doesn't matter where you start, All right? And I actually said those in the wrong order. Now, if I hadn't have told you that, you wouldn't have known. So here's a little tip. If you ever have to read anything out in public, and that's mums and dads, as well as boys and girls, if you get it wrong, don't go, oh, I got it wrong, because it doesn't matter. Nobody will know. It should have gone back garden or school playground, down the local park, five aside under the lights, it doesn't matter where you start, a kick about with mates, penalties with dad and mum, keep you up is by yourself, football for every one. But it doesn't matter. Okay, that's my little tip. Keep on going. So, football for everyone, illustrated by the brilliant Martin Chatterton. In fact, if you go on my website, which is paulcooksonpoet.co.uk, all right, paulcooksonpoet.co.uk, you'll find there's a video that Martin and myself have done. I say, we've done. I've read the poem. Martin's uh, done the, drawn the cover and brought it to life with a fantastic video. Have a look at that. And there's some other video poetry on there as well. And, um, yeah, here's a poem about playing football with your dad or your granddad or your uncle or your stepdad. Because I've noticed if you are playing football with a grown man, what that grown man does... He pretends in his own little man brain that he's a premiership footballer and tries to show off in front of you, the child. When Dad scored a goal in the garden, he celebrated with glee. He put his T-shirt over his head and ran into the tree. When he scored his second, he should have had more sense. He tried to slide, but he couldn't stop and he smashed the garden fence. His hat-trick handstand antics tried to claim the ball and grab it, but he slipped and tripped, his trousers ripped and he flattened next to a rabbit. When Mum came out and shouted... It was me he blamed. But luckily, I filmed it. Now it's been on you've been framed. And Grandad thinks he's Bobby Charlton just because he's bald. Uncle thinks he's Peter Crouch because he's really tall. And just because he wears a cap, Dad thinks he's Petter Check. And Brother thinks he's Rooney <laughs> because he looks like Shrek. And there's a magnificent picture of Brother looking like Shrek. Or indeed Rooney. Or indeed both. So... This year we've had a crocodile in the house and then that came out and then two weeks ago this arrived. And what I love about this, it's a hardback book. It's called A Fire Burn and Cauldron Bubble. Now the other two books I wrote every single poem in those books. This book I chose the poems and I've chosen some of my favourite poets and my favourite poems. And there are lots of wonderful poems about magic. So if you like Halloween and witches and wizards and mythical creatures and beasts, this is a fantastic book. And also, I love the illustrations there. I look at the illustrations there. That's by somebody called Ailey Muldoon. And she's done a marvellous job with the illustrations. So, I'm going to read two poems in here that might give you ideas for writing a poem of your own. The first one is called Wizzle McWizards. Amazing creations. And he's not just a wizard who can cast spells and make potions, he can invent things. And I was thinking, if you could invent something to help you at home or at school, what would you invent? Or if you could make a spell, what would that spell do to your brother, your sister, your mum, your dad, the dog, the boy who sits next to you in class who annoys you? What would it do to your teacher? What would you put into that potion? There's a great poem in here by William Shakespeare. Where we get the title from? Fire, burn and cauldron bubble. Hubble, bubble, toil and trouble, fire, burn and cauldron bubble. Look it up and there's loads of ingredients. You can use that as a starting point. Your eye of dog, eye of toad and tongue of frog. That sort of thing. You, know, you could have eye of something, tongue of something, wing of something, leg of something. And then put it together. Sweaty socks handkerchief, mushy peas, you know, that sort of thing. And then put it together and get your own potion. Anyway, this might give you some ideas as well. Wizzle McWizard's Amazing Creations. Self-cleaning socks for long-distance runners. Self-cooling sandals for steaming hot summers. Bed socks for dogs and pillows for cats. Spring-loaded exercise strength cricket bats. Self-inflating life-saving knickers. 
pulpits with engines for overworked vicars. All these and more are magic sensations. Whiz home at wizards and amazing creations. Bananas and oranges fitted with zips. Healthy, calorie-free fish and chips. Centrally heated, warm toilet seats. Non-flavour fading, non-shrinking sweet sweets. A homework computer that fits in your pocket. Football boots with the power of a rocket. Spells and inventions, magic sensations, with whiz home at wizards, amazing creations, sprockets and sockets and test tubes that boil, wires and fires and foil and oil, springs that go zing and things that uncoil, hubble, bubble, trial and toil, jottings and workings and odd calculations, diagrams labelled with weird notations, models that move with the strangest rotations, uttering mutterings, strange incantations, a potion to send your teacher to sleep, a lotion that makes grandad's hair like a sheep, a tablet to take to turn sister blue, a pill to prescribe for a sick cockapoo, a spell you can tell to shut up your brother, a chant to encant to silence. A word that's absurd, it freezes up time. A magical pencil to make each poem rhyme. Line after 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 line. Line after line of magic sensations. Whizzle, not wizards, amazing creations. So what would you invent? What spell would you cast? And the second poem I'm going to read uh, from this book is called the magic kitchen carpet and imagine some children playing on a little carpet because normally when you think of a, a magic carpet it's something that flies away and takes you to different places like in aladdin and things like that but i thought what if the carpet was a place where you played and then your imagination did the rest the magic kitchen carpet there's an old and tattered carpet upon the kitchen floor it's weather beaten moth-eaten just behind the door it's colour drained and food stained it's shabby and it's torn it's dead bare it's threadbare it's weathered and it's worn on this tattered magic carpet you can choose your destination any wild adventure and any situation when the cooking's hot and bubbling or somewhere hot and tropical when wearing granny's glasses or somewhere microscopical. If the ironing is steaming, we're deep in the Sahara, or silly circus clowns with mum's lipstick and mascara. If the washer overflows, we're in shark infested seas. When the freezer door is open, we're in an Arctic breeze, or rockets flying high in space. If mum does the hoovering, if she rearranges furniture, we are warplanes out manoeuvring. Lots of jars and bottles means experiments with science. And when Dad leaves his wellies there, we're in the land of giants. The ticking of the toaster is a robot that is sleeping. An alien attack when the microwave is beeping. On this tattered magic carpet, you can choose your destination. For nothing's quite as magical as your imagination. Okay, uh, it's nearly time for me to finish. I'm just going to talk about one more book. You might see these books behind me. This is called Fighting Talk. Now, throughout lockdown, I've been writing one poem every single day, often to do with the news. So it's been about coronavirus or lockdown or Mr. Trump and drinking bleach, that sort of thing. And that's, uh, that's a book of points for grown-ups, really. But Chris Riddell, who used to be the children's laureate, he did some fantastic pictures. All these books are available uh, on my website or Amazon, all the usual places. And uh, this one especially uh, for, for grown-ups as well. That's available on the website. But I'm going to finish off with my favourite poem from this book here. And this is called The Very Best of Paul Cookson. And uh, it's got lots of my favourite poems in here. And the favourite one... Uh, I'm going to do two actually. One is cut. One is dedicated to libraries and librarians and books because I think 
books are fantastic. If you haven't joined your library, please do support your library. And it's called A Favourite Book and a Comfy Chair. I just can't wait to be with you. Time flies by when you are there. You take me to another place, a favourite book and a comfy chair. And you fill my head with images and feelings I can't wait to share. You touch all my emotions, a favourite book and a comfy chair. And where you go, I'll follow. You can take me anywhere. Horizons disappear with you, a favourite book and a comfy chair. And my last poem is called Let No One Steal Your Dreams. And I don't mean the dreams you have at night that are bonkers when you're asleep. I mean ambitions, things you want to do. Because who knows, they might come true. I didn't know when I was your age, little boys and girls, that I wanted to be a poet. And here I am, a poet. Follow those dreams. Let no one steal your dreams. Let no one tear apart the burning of ambition that fires the drive inside your heart. Let no one steal your dreams. Let no one tell you that you can't. Let no one hold you back. Let no one tell you that you won't. Set your sights and keep them fixed. Set your sights on high. Let no one steal your dreams. Your only limit is the sky. Let no one steal your dreams. Follow your heart and follow your soul. For only when you follow them will you feel truly whole. Set your sights and keep them fixed. Set your sights on high. Let no one steal your dreams. Your only limit is the sky. Thank you very much. Hope you've enjoyed the poems. Do support your local library. And I'll see you again some other time. Thank you very much.